Page 12 of Probability, number 5. A board game uses the spinner, sh spinner shown. If the spin first spin is red, then the spinner is spun a second time. Uh, complete the tree diagram by labeling each branch with its probability. You can see from the area of the spinner that the red region has a 3 fourths chance and the blue region has a 1 fourth chance. So the red region will put 3 fourths and the blue region will put 1 fourth. And so in the second spin, it's the exact same probability for each. Okay. And then it says, and I forgot to put this uh, in your problem set, but it doesn't make any sense if they don't ask something after this, right? Calculate the probability that the end result is blue. Okay. So that would be um, this case and this case, right? They're uh, not the red case. Okay. So. Uh, what's the probability that you get this leg? It would be one-fourth, right? You would just multiply together this with nothing. It would just keep that. And then what about uh, this one here? You would multiply this together with this, and then three-fourths times one-fourth would give you three-sixteenths. Okay, and then so you would add those two, two together. Three-sixteenths plus one-fourth. One-fourth is four-sixteenths, so it would be equal to seven-sixteenths. Seven-sixteenths. Next one, seven. Bag A contains three red and two white marbles. Bag B contains four red and three white marbles. One marble is randomly selected from A and its color is noted. If it is red, two reds are added to bag B. If it is white, two whites are added to bag B. Wow, a marble is then selected from bag B. What is the chance that the marble selected is white? Okay, since this is the tree diagram section, we're going to do a tree diagram. So we're going to first choose between bag A and bag B. No. First we're going to select a, a, um, a marble from bag A. And uh, so from bag A we're going to get either a red marble or a white marble. Right? So what is the chance we're going to get a red marble from bag A? Well, it's going to be uh, three out of five, right? Because there's five marbles total. And the white is going to be two out of five. Okay. What do we do next? Uh, if it is red, two reds are added to bag B. If it is white, two whites are added to bag B. Wow, how confusing. So if it is red, we add two reds to bag B. And if it's white, we add two whites to bag B. Okay, and then it affects the probability for bag B, right? A marble is then selected from bag B. What is the chance that the marble selected is white? So again, we're going to choose red or white. We're going to choose red or white. And normally the probability is going to correspond to this number here. But remember, if we're on the top legs, we've added two reds to it. Uh, so it's going to be six reds and three whites instead. And in the bottom configuration, it's going to be four reds and five whites. So we need to do the probabilities according to these new um, adjusted uh, marble uh, quantities. So like for red, it's going to be six divided by nine, because nine is the total number. And it's going to be three divided by nine for white. And then for red, it's going to be 4 divided by 9, and for white it's going to be 5 divided by 9. Okay, then it says, what is the probability that the marble selected is white? Uh, so white from, from bag B. What is, what is the probability that the marble selected from bag B is white? Because you also had bag A, remember? So it would be this case and this case. It would be this times this and this times this. So if we multiply the numerators together, we get 9. The denominators together, we get 45. Here we multiply the numerators together, we get 10. Denominator, we get 45. So if we add those together, we get 19 divided by 45. So that would be the answer. Okay, are we in the last one? Last one of Hansho. Okay. A container holds three red, seven white, and two black balls. A ball is chosen at random from the container and is not replaced. 
A second ball is then chosen. Find the probability of choosing one white and one black ball in any order. Okay. A container holds three red, seven white, and two black. A ball is chosen at random from the container and is not replaced. A second ball is then chosen. Okay. So first we got red, white, or black. And what is the probability of choosing each one of these? To choose red, it would be 3 divided by, and the total is 3 plus 7 plus 2, which is 12. It would be 3 out of 12. White would be 7 out of 12. And then black would be 2 out of 12. Okay. So a ball is chosen at random from the container is not replaced. The second ball is then chosen. Okay, so now we're going to choose another, another ball. Okay, those are not replaced. The second ball is then chosen. Find the probability of choosing one white and one black ball in any order. One white and one black ball in any order. Okay. So now we're choosing another, another, right, red, white, black. Red, white. Okay. Um, a ball is chosen at random from the container is not replaced. A second ball is then chosen. Find the probability of choosing one white and one black ball in any order. Okay. And so normally we'd use the exact same probabilities we use here. We use 3 twelfths, 7 twelfths, 2 twelfths for the second round. Except we have not replaced the balls. So for example, here we chose a red one. Now instead of having three reds, we only have two reds. So to choose another red, it would be two out of, and now instead of having 12 balls, we only have 11 balls because we already drew one out. The next, now the numerator for white is going to remain seven, and the denominator is going to be 11 because we took out a red ball, the white numbers, the ball, the quantity of white balls is not affected. Okay, what about black balls? So now instead of uh, the, the quantity of black balls is not affected, still 2, the denominator is going to be 11. The denominator is always going to be 11 because we reduced the total number of balls from 12 to 11 from the first to the second round, right? Okay, well now we've drawn out a white ball in the in, down here, so that means that instead of 7 white balls, now we have 6 white balls, so this is going to be 6 out of 11. Now the other quantities are not affected, so like two black balls, we still have two black balls. Uh, red balls, we still have three red balls, so this would be three out of 11 here. Uh, down here. Now we've drawn out a black ball here, so instead of having two black balls, now we have one black ball, so it would be one out of 11. The red balls are not affected, we still have three which is the original amount, 3 out of 11, and the white balls are also not affected. It's going to be 7 out of 11. Okay, so we've written all our probabilities out. Then it asks us, and at this point, you know, if you wanted to, you could multiply out all your probabilities, but, you know, since they're fractions, it's kind of a, uh, a pain. Okay, so now a ball is chosen at random from the container not replaced. A second ball is then chosen. Find the probability of choosing one white and one black ball in any order. Okay, so for example, white, black, that's fine. Uh, black, white, one white and one black. And so those are the only two possibilities, right? Because in the um, the other ones would be two white, two blacks. So those are, these are the only two. So we're going to multiply together, uh, oops, we're going to multiply together seven twelfths and three elevenths, and we're going to multiply together two twelfths and seven elevenths. Let's see what we get. We are going to multiply together. The numerator, 7 times 3 is 21. The denominators, 11 times 12 is, I don't know, going to be something like 132. And then here it would be 2 times, I can't read my own writing. What does that say? Oh, it's 7, 11. So 7 times 2 is 14, and then the denominator is 132. And now we can add these two together. 21 plus 14 is going to be 35 over 132. So that is the probability of choosing one white and one black in either order. Okay, and that was page 12.